All right. Hi guys, I'm here with Allison Papinfuse. She is the Assistant Director of Strength and Conditioning at Bowling Green State University. Just talk through a little bit. She's, she has a pretty cool background um, and I'll let her kind of take it from here and tell you what, where she's been and where she's at now. Perfect. Thanks, man. Um, so I, like you said, I'm the Assistant Director of Strength and Conditioning Bowling Green. So I'm in charge of men's basketball, men's and women's soccer, women's golf, and tennis. Um, love what I do. I've been in the game for, this is the end of my sixth year now, not including unpaid internships. Uh, I did my undergrad at Bowling Green. I actually played basketball here. Um, I was pre-med until organic chemistry came along and then that fell apart. So I found my way to strength and conditioning. I had started lifting uh, when I was younger and it really helped me become a division one athlete. I'm undersized center. If any of you are watching the last dance right now, Dennis Rodman, that was me. So that's the big, the best comparison I've got. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so undergrad master's at Bowling Green, uh, volunteered intern for two, about two years, uh, got a paid internship at Frostburg State. It's a D2 school in Western Maryland, right on the tail end, basically West Virginia. And then from there, went to Indiana University. I was at Indiana University for three years. I worked with water polo, softball, a little bit of football, women's basketball, women's golf, a little bit of swim and dive, kind of everything that you could see. And then Bowling Green called last year and I've been back ever since. That's awesome. Um, so what teams are you working with now? So um, since I've been back, so I came back and I had, I've actually had a bunch, we had a director changeover. Currently I have men's basketball, both men's and women's soccer, women's golf and tennis. And then my boss and I split track and field and cross country. So we kind of tag team that depending on who's available. That's a, that's a lot to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of teams, a lot of people. Yeah. We're a, uh, we're a small staff. So we have 18 sports total, including football. Um, and there is, and it's a staff, there's three full timers. One of our guys only does football, M myself, my boss. And then we have two part-time guys that work football and we give them other stuff because it's a smaller school. Like part-time is different at a smaller school. You get a lot of responsibility and we need you ready to run things. So they get their chance to do stuff. That's cool. That's cool. I love it. Um, so that's, that's awesome. Um, I was wondering, do you have any specific like training philosophies or just generalities that you kind of uh, abide by, like when you're programming uh, for your athletes? Yes. Um, so I am a big believer in like full body all day, every day. Um, it's always going to be different one, but, um, so I start with a basic kind of template and it's first thing is your main lifts. And that can be what coaches want sport dependent. All of that can be hand clean, squat, bench, deadlift, like snatch different coaches want different things, but always start there. I'll always go to upper body push, upper body pull. In horizontal vertical changes single leg posterior chain some type of shoulder some type of core if you strip everything away it comes back to those principles then it'll change on the sport like I do a lot of work with RATs what do our sports need different things like women's soccer is going to spend a lot more time doing posterior chain and single leg work I mean I, almost any woman's sport because the magic letters are those ACLs and working on keeping that healthy. Whereas men's basketball this past year, we actually were able to break them up a little bit more because we had put some size on them and just needed to be able to refine them a little bit more, but then had kid with a hamstring thing over here. And then another one that is, had a shoulder issue. So we were able to like work those around to make them a little bit better. Whereas our bigs needed some more, some extra conditions. So instead of like doing a barbell split squat, they were doing walking lunges, like anything just to get heart rate up and keep them moving. It's all dependent on the sport and it's all dependent on kind of how you work it in, how you work with coaches. 
No, no, that's, that's a great point. And that's really interesting, actually. Um, when you do your, so we start with the big lifts, but when you start, I'm assuming that you do some sort of warm up um, of sorts yes. before that. Um, do you do that? Like, are, are all athletes doing that warm up together? Or does each athlete kind of have their own individual warm up that they do based on some sort of needs analysis? Um, it's, it'll change. It'll change depending on, um, so my soccer teams really like to lift after practice. So they'll come in a lot of times they'll come in ready to go. Um, women's soccer this past year lifted at 6 a.m., which they were thrilled with. But like I, they roll in, they're fresh out of bed. And so I would actually use that opportunity to go over a lot of like jump and landing mechanics to work on that knee stability, to work on that ankle stability. So it was an opportunity to switch things. But then as you get kids later in the afternoon, you're really able to start working on posture analysis. Like this person needs like his hip flexors are tight, which means like he's rolled over. And so we were really able to kind of fit it in individually as we go, as we went along. It's almost the later in the day, the more individualized you can get. In the morning, it's all about like, okay, let's wake up and be alive. People. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, so when you're kind of going through the, the programming side of things, I mean, you can use it like lifting percentages, RP, there are lots of different ways you can track that, um, other progressions, uh, especially in your main lifts. Um, like you said, I'm assuming those are kind of key performance indicators for you. Um, but are there any other, any other tools like technologies that you use to kind of help guide your training? So I use a ton of the velocity-based training in like what we do so we're going to get the maxes i'm not a huge i don't want to say believer because i do believe in them but like i don't do a ton of like program percentages in. what i do is i do a ton of like the velocity of it so if i want someone to move like to move it faster we're gonna get like i want your range to be in between here like maybe we're working in a speed day and i want it to be between like 0.7 meters per second 1.0 the reason that I don't do a ton of percentages is we're going to sit here and we're going to go, man, like we PR today. It was the best day ever. And we're comparing every day to your best day ever. And sometimes 60% of your PR is more like 80% that day. And I'm losing what I'm looking for. So when we work with the velocity training, I'm really able to, Hey, this is a lighter day. It should be about 60% of your max, but I want it to be between this number, and this number. Like we have percentage charts up on the racks, just a simple, like find your max, go over, here's a percentage, find it. Okay. That's where you should be about today. Gotcha. And yeah. they all know I was wondering how you prescribe the load. So you have some sort of percentage max chart and then they, they have an idea of yeah. where, what weight should be on the bar. And then they'll fluctuate that depending on the velocities that they're hitting. Yeah. And it, and it depends on the team kind of like how they do that. Like, um, hockey is a team that they'll, they'll put on 60% and they'll go from there. Whereas men's basketball is a team that they'll put on weight and they'll blow their numbers out of the water. And I'll be like, okay, so I want it like under that, like we need to add weight and then they'll go from there. So men's basketball, if I want, like, I'll have to go, you, I need three sets in between here. However long it takes to get you to there is however long it takes. Whereas hockey, I'll just go, okay, five sets. We'll start here and then we'll go from there. And it's just, it's interesting to see how the teams like interact with each other. And like women's soccer hates speed days because they just want to lift heavy all the time. So like, I'll have to be like, listen, like, <laughs> it's these numbers. This is what I'm looking for. Like, what's your point guys? Yeah. And like, we'll laugh because we'll go like interns will look at uh, numbers later and they'll be like, why'd they drop weight? And I was like, cause look at their speed. And it's like, Oh, it was supposed to be 0.7 and it's like 0.3. I'm like, right. <laughs> gotcha. No, that's cool. So, you, so in strength days and speed days or in anything in between, you're just, you're using velocities to kind of dictate that. So if you do have like a heavy strength day and your intended training ad adaptation is strength related, you'll have like, oh yeah. All right. So you're going to build up to, you know, a certain number of reps, you know, like 0.3 to 0.5 uh, meters yeah. per second or something like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. Like, that's, I use that a lot. And it's, I found like, so with the push system, we have iPads that are on the rack. It's a little um, device that just straps onto the bar. And 
It just measures the speed and it'll tell you your speed after each rep. And I found it's wonderful. I remember the first time I tested it out on myself and I was like, I'm just going to do a five by five squat and see how it is. And all of a sudden when you're trying to beat that number, I was so sore the next day. I was like, this is great. Like <laughs> we're going to love this. And, and the thing with them too is it actually will put up a leaderboard. Like everything connects to the cloud and I can put a leaderboard up on like one of the TVs and people get competitive about it. Like, you know, it's a speed day. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at max force. Here's what your force is. Here's where your acceleration is, all this stuff. And like guys get pissed. <laughs> they get so mad when they're losing. Like, uh, and so it's really entertaining. One, I know I'm getting the max effort and I know I'm getting what I'm looking for. But then two, like, I can, I can tell you like, Hey, move the bar fast. And Oh, I did. But like, no, you didn't. like now there's an actual representation and like they can see it as opposed to everyone thinks we move fast until we actually are told that we're not. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's a great point. And like you said, like, even, even, even if you're not looking at the numbers at all and you're using it to drive intent or you're, or, you know, if you want someone to, to try really hard and showing them those numbers, giving that biofeedback can be really beneficial for that. Yeah. I know I'd be pissed if I was at the bottom of a list. So that makes me oh, yeah. a little bit harder. Um, do, do you use the numbers at all, like to inform subsequent, I guess, training decisions? Like, so, you know, you get all, you have all this velocity based training data um, and the way that you progress, I guess, an individual athlete or, or you make manipulations for an athlete on a given day. Um, do you, do you use any of that? Um, in that context? Uh, so a lot of what I'll do is I'll actually use it to, um, I'll use it to bump maxes, um, depending on where we are, depending on where we are in season. Like I'm not going to max people out in the middle of the season, but if I see it that you're, you're killing this number. Like you moved 135 at 0.2 before, and now you're moving it consistently at 0.4. I'm bumping your max up. So that way we can get, we can get that read off of it. And then two, I use it in season to monitor kind of CNS. Like we do the wellness questionnaires, we have whoop bands, we do all those things and they're great. And like talking to the kids sometimes, like that's my big thing. And they walk in, I'm like, Hey, how you doing? Well, oh, today sucks. But this past year, it was a lot with men's basketball. So I actually had them in smaller groups and I was able to monitor them a little bit more. And we had a kid come in and it was a speed bench day. We were two days before a game, like nothing crazy. And he benches and it's like, he just keeps, it's 135 on the bar. It's something he's done a thousand times. And it just was reading out at like 0.3. And I just kept like, I kept standing there and I was like, okay, let's lower it a little bit. Like, let's go like 115. Let's just see how you do. And he just could not get this to move. And finally I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to listen to my gut here and just cut it. Like we're done. Like we stretched, we rolled out, like send him to the athletic trainer. The athletic trainer's like, yep, I think he's getting sick. <laughs> I'm like, oh good. Like, so it's it's just a simple way for me to just keep an eye on things. Like whether it's <laughs> something going on. Sorry. <laughs> that would be my dog. He someone walked by our house. How dare they? my dog gets mad when kids play are, when the kids are laughing outside and having fun so yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so but yeah so it's an easy way like for me it's an easy way to monitor cns because when your cns is fried something else is going to come up and like whether we don't whether we know it yet or not like it's a really good indicator especially like in season like and i mean that kid like ended up playing the next couple games and like fought a sickness off a little bit but like can you imagine if I had just sat there and been like no you're fine let's do all of these reps that I want you to do today like he didn't need it yeah yeah no that's that that's a great use case for it I think that's really interesting do you, and do you so like on the do they do you give cards out like that they're writing things on so that you can see like you know you have a certain velocity prescription you know on this four week card or something like that and then they write their weights in so is that how you kind of track how they're improving or not so actually the really cool thing with push is that they type their weights in and then i get all of that data i get their sets i get their reps i get their data 
like, so I get all of that pulled up on the computer later on. So I can just go through, I can flip through and find people's weights pretty easily. Like, this is what this guy did th this day versus this day. And then we've got it charted out. So I can be like, okay, I want to see the trend of 135 through the year. Like, where are we high? Where are we low? How's our speed looking for that? That's awesome. So you have, so you have iPads or some tablet device at each of these yeah. racks and, and the kids are um, interacting with those and selecting their profiles, setting everything up. And I'm sure maybe you have like a couple people uh, on staff that are kind of helping facilitate that process. Yeah. So my boss and I take the main lead on it. And then as we bring internships in, um, intern students, they do a ton of work with them. We want them to get used to it. I mean, sports science is huge now. Like I, I work at kind of at a midway point, like my boss and I laugh, he's really big into, super, into sports science. And I, I do a lot of the in-between. I use it a lot. I use it. And then I use just old school coaching methods too. And so we interact, but we want, we want people to be comfortable with it. We want someone to be able to look at that. And then, so then when they're going for these next jobs, we can be like, here, you did all this stuff. They built this database. They know how to use this and it makes them more marketable. Yeah, no, that, that's a great idea. I, I love that so much. Um, like I, I never, I know when I was going through school, um, I got shown how to implement, uh, like periodize a program and implement it, coach people up. And then when I got into the, I guess the real world, um, if you will, all of a sudden there are these heart rate monitors, there's v VBT and there's all this other stuff. And then before you know it, you're dealing with data, Excel spreadsheets, all this stuff. But I'm like, I don't know what any of this is. Oh it's yeah. A steep learning curve. So I love that you're kind of get, getting an intro um, to the kids early on. Yeah. Um, so you talked a little bit about using whoop uh, bands. Uh, mm -hmm. and I was wondering how, how do you, well, I guess what is a whoop band first and then how do you kind of use it with your athletes? So uh, a whoop band, it's a, it's like a strain monitor. It's a band the guys, so we got them for all men's basketball players this year. We've had a couple that have disappeared. Um, if you're ever going snorkeling, take them off. That's what we learned this year. Uh, we had an incident down in the Virgin Island that we lost one. Um, but so the guys wear it and it records like the strain of the day. It's like the top strain you can get is like a 21. And I think they said it's impossible to get that. Like the highest people ever get is like a 20.9. And so it just kind of, it records like what exercise you're doing, strain is, and through all of that, it helps calculate how much sleep you need, what kind of sleep you need, and how we can do that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so men's basketball bought into it, and we are not the greatest sleepers, to say the least. Um, we're working with it. It's still our first year. Um, so we're working with kind of, we were looking through you know, how much sleep did this guy get when he played really well? Like, do we need to look at two days before a game that that's when the sleep really starts? And uh, between the athletic trainer and myself, we've tried to like, like just feed them stuff of like, hey, like make sure you're getting to bed early, like lights off at this time. Like when we're on the road, it's a little bit easier. At home, it's not. Um, any suggestions people have on like encouraging people to go to bed earlier, I send them my way. Like, We've tried a lot. The thing that I actually pushed is I did a lot of like, they'll give a recovery score too. Yeah. And that's not just sleep. It's water. It's all that stuff. So I try to like send guys and be like, Hey, like your recovery score will go up if you get this. And if you like, it, did you drink enough water today? Like, um, Whoop puts together a ton of articles on their website. It's like, in their like locker room or something like that about like improving scores and podcasts and I listened to more and I tried to shoot them out to the guys. I know a lot of them didn't listen to them or read the articles, but if I could read them and pick up like one or two things to be like, Hey, like make sure we're drinking enough water, X, Y, and Z, it would help. Awesome. So I mean, in the sense, I mean, you're using it really well as, as like a biofeedback tool, kind of similar to push in that sense where if someone has a low recovery score, it gives you an opportunity to say, well, if you, if, if you if you do these healthy habits, I guess you know then your recovery score will improve, which is is what it comes down to, right? Like behavior change. Like if someone sees that they're not sleeping, or they're they're getting five hours of sleep a night, 
it's 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 on your phone it's on your it's coming from your wrist right it says hey look at this you're not sleeping enough so here are some strategies to kind of help promote that yeah and with whoop is it do you know so like with the strain score that you talked about and the sleep data is that based on accelerometry or is it based on heart rate or? it's based on heart rate so it measures your heart rate something like 80 times or like yeah uh, there's some there's some ridiculous number that's like or it's like 20 times a second or something like that it measures your heart rate it's wrist worn so there is some discrepancy a little bit but a lot of top end athletes are using it it's like stanford did like the basketball study with whoop that was um it's like the guys that slept more ended up averaging like five percent better on their free throws and so that was a big re that's like one of the big selling points that we're trying to get these guys to buy into but you're you're working with what you got and sometimes they listen sometimes they don't yeah yeah without a doubt well that's uh that's pretty cool. Um, with the whoop band stuff though, um, does it go, so it go, do you get the data or does it just go to the athletes, personal mobile devices? Like there's not a team solution or. There is a team solution. Is, so okay. they put it on their mobile devices and then the athletic trainer has it set up. So both him and I have access to the team data. So we've got a team scoreboard, all of that. And like, I, I've been selfishly, I've been trying to get them to get me one so I can be like, no, just put mine up there with the guys. And then I'll, they'll be like, oh, look, Pat sleeps a lot. Like, yeah. <laughs> but they're like, no. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I know. I mean, when I was um, doing a lot of strength and conditioning work, I don't know if I would, I'd probably be the worst, <laughs> the worst sleeper of all the athletes. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's the general rule that they've gotten used to with me that I'm like, well, okay call me all you want, but if you call me after like 9.30, you'll get an answer at 4 a.m. So take a pick. Yep. The, you, you and I both, so my, my phone, once I am going to bed, do not disturb goes on. And when I wake up, then I'll get to whatever's left over. Um, yep. I like the strategy. Hey, it's a, it's a good sleep strategy. So um, are there any other pieces of tech that, that you use that, that you want to talk about or um, so, I mean, soccer's obviously use the catapult system. Um, my men's soccer coach is awesome with his. The, so I really like it. They put together a, like, I get a periodization through the whole season. And they'll go through and be like, this day's going to, like, perceived heavy, perceived light. Like, it, it is, it's one of the best ideas for catapult. So I'll be able to go in, find the periodization, look at it and be like hey yesterday was a heavy day like so you want me to stay a little lighter today what do you want and a lot of times he'll hit me with little you know like go a little lighter on legs like we ran a lot and guys are tired but let's get a little bit heavier upper body upper body and abs all right cool like but it's I'm it's able to be broken down so easily and the thing that I really like with them is once a week they do like the pacer test and only to a certain point, like it's not real long and it's is not. Is that a beep test or, or is that something, something else? Yeah, it's like, it's the second like generation of the beep test. It's like they run down and back and then they have like a five yard walk. Gotcha. So it's, um, it's still set to like certain paces. So they'll do it and then they get the chance to like, it's done. They got to, they stand there for another two minutes to get the, their heart rates come down. And he's really able to monitor like, hey, this guy's doing too much. Like his, his beep test score was way off the charts, whereas he's normally pretty steady. So I, I love the opportunity to work with Catapult, being able to do that. And then women's soccer, fortunately this semester got cut a little short, but we had started doing the Catapults in the weight room to be able to see kind of what the strain was in there. And that was, and work too with like the velocity-based training, like we can still get heart rates on speed days, like what's the difference in the speed day versus the strength day? Like, what are we looking at? How's the recovery? Do we need to add time in? Gotcha. So, so you're with catapult, you're getting, well, they have a chest strap on. Is there another unit that goes on the bat? Like, or is it all collected through that chest strap and there's some accelerometry data alongside that? So they have a chest strap and then they have a little, um, GPS thing that goes in the back. And so they're, they're able to turn when they're outside, they're able to get GPS. It's it, indoor, you're not able to get GPS. It's all heart rate based, but 
still it's it's another thing that's like that's pretty cool yeah no it kill yeah i mean you, you get a couple couple nice things out of that out of that one system which is awesome yeah well cool um yeah no it sounds like you got a lot going on i, I guess my last question is dealing with all the information like obviously uh well i would assume that the gps units have to be charged and set up um on a daily or on a daily basis or every couple of days the velocity-based training units and, and iPads or tablets and all that stuff has to be dealt with. And then above all, I mean, j someone has to make sure that the data coming from all these different sources is, is accurate. And I, I wonder, like, just as a system that, that you guys have kind of set up, how, how does that get dealt with? So um, we do a lot of like, just kind of going through like being able to just take data and just plug it straight into a Google database and able to work with that. What, like, whether it's I dive in, look at every minuscule rep, I don't. Like, I'm gonna see kind of the main ones, I'm gonna go through, I'm always gonna look at it, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna dive directly into it. I love sports science, I do, but I believe at a certain point, like, you gotta be able to see some of it too. And if I spent all my time sitting on my computer, I might miss like my one kid walk, it, like I got a kid that walks in and his head's down and he's a sad boy today. And I'm like, oh, like that, I don't, I don't need push to tell me that his workout's gonna be terrible. Like he's a sad boy. And so I think the, I think the main thing with sports science is that you have to find the line. You have to find where the data is and where the human aspect is. And so I think our department does a really good job of finding that line, of being able to be like, oh, shoot, like, here's this. But that doesn't mean we need to go through every single rep to be like, oh, like, he played great. Like, and he got a, like, this velocity on this rep of bench, so he has to hit that again, and then we're going to get 20 points out of him. Eh, probably not, but can we find some – similarities where there's oh hey like you know this workout he felt good today like this workout was good he slept this much like let's see if we can encourage him to do that again and then look at the strain as we lead into the days before the game no i think that's awesome and that's a great point too i always tell like my students and anyone i talk to that you know the the data is great and you know it helps you make makes some some decisions uh, that don't necessarily relate directly to the athletes but it all comes down to having a conversation at some point in discussions um to facilitate what needs to be done you're never going to make a decision exclusively based on on data that's being collected from a device at least i wouldn't yeah uh, so that's really cool um i i don't have any other questions for you uh do, do you have a place i guess if people had more questions um or wanted to contact you is there any is there a good way to do that so uh, my work email is probably the best way um, it's when I get back to the most um, so I'm online on the BGSU athletic department page if not it's um, a k p a p e n at bgsu.edu I'm more than happy to talk shop like love doing this stuff and love sharing kind of what my ideas are even though sometimes I feel like I'm just repeating what everyone else says. No, no, you're not, everyone has different perspectives and it was awesome getting, getting yours. It, it's, it's really cool. Um, you're doing a lot of really, I mean, in my opinion, really, really fun and awesome things. And it's, uh, thank you so much for taking the time and, and discussing them with me. I, I learned a lot. So no, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad I got the opportunity to, and, you know, happy to help, especially in this time, like, man, you probably could have, showing some of this stuff like in class or something but instead they just get to listen to me talk so happy oh. to help out as much as i can and i mean people like it's a tough profession but if you love it you you find ways to stay in it without a doubt i'm with you well awesome allison thanks again um i really appreciate it yeah no problem adam I re not a problem anytime all right cool